Learn. Parshas by Yigash. Is in this week's parsha. Is this week's parsha on page two hundred and fifty. Two hundred and fifty. The drama continues. We left off last week in the middle of a story where <coughs> Yosef is in Egypt. Just to recap, Yosef is in Egypt. The father and the family is in Canaan. Yosef is becoming the second in command of Egypt, responsible for everything that goes out in Egypt. There is a famine from the old world. They're traveling to purchase food in Egypt. 22 years where Joseph is separated from his father and family. He met them last week in Pasha's Mikings. He recognized them. The Torah tells us that they did not recognize him. But he did recognize them. Rashi makes a comment something to do with the beard. He was a 17-year-old boy, didn't grow a beard yet. Obviously, Yosef, classic Hasid, the Lubavitcher Hasid, obviously. <laughs> so was growing a nice beard. <coughs> 22 years later, he looked like a Viaid Kukdois. <laughs> and now, He's playing a whole to do with first arresting Shimon. Going to have, you're always going to ask yourself the very same question. What is the question that bothers every Jew who studies Pashas by Yigash, Pashas Mikes, Pashas by Yichi? Why did question why is, you is what? Why is he teaching his brothers? By stealing his brothers is one thing, but even more than that. You have every opportunity to reach out to your father and letting him know I am alive. Mm -hmm. He has every opportunity to do it. He is the man in charge. The past office is under him. How much can you do when you're stuck in a cell or in a pit, as the Torah calls it? But now that you're ready for years, because remember the seven years of satisfaction, now we are holding you ready the seven years of famine. <clears throat> and he's the man in charge. The Torah gives us very clear and specific details about who and what he was involved with. He was responsible for the entire house of Pharaoh, the palace. Pharaoh told him last week, except from the throne, Everything else is yours. It's not so far. Send them the knowing how much pain it would cost to the father, needing now to separate from Binyamin. Right? He knows it all. And he goes directly without any. As his brother go through the the cycle of 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 uh, of, of uh, you know of drama, you know, and only later in the end you will see him finally getting excited to say, "Go bring my father." As we're going to see in a moment how it evolves. What kept Yosef away? Don't. Take revenge and don't keep a grudge. Let's say if you're upset, Yosef as an observant Jew, as the Torah describes him as a God-fearing person, he should have known that we don't take revenge. And I don't believe that it was revenge, because as we see later, he himself tells his brothers when they 
think for a moment that maybe this is only after Yaakov dies and they think that he might revenge them for their behavior in the past and Yosef says to them, are you suspecting me to take revenge from you? Was it you who sent me here? It was a plan by God and I ended up being a source of support for you and, and Obviously, that's it. I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you. They're both not talking to each other. And nobody's going to break. No, no one's going to be the first one to, to break the silence. But the husband has to get up tomorrow morning to go to the airport. Five o'clock in the morning, he has a business flight. And he needs his wife to wake him up. But he can't talk because if I want to talk, then I'm with the, I was the one breaking the rule. So he leaves in a note at the night table. Wake me up at 5 a.m. He goes to sleep. Have a good schlaf. He gets a good schlaf. But he wakes up at 9 o'clock. He's fiery, angry, upset. He lost his flight. The old spiel with Yosef and his father is, is very bothersome. But it becomes even more obvious uh, to, uh, difficult it is to understand what's going on over here, especially with his brother Binyamin. Binyamin was he any part involved in selling Yosef to Egypt? Garnished, he was a little boy, right? He wasn't even there in Shechem when the brothers threw him into the pit and then they sold him to the Egyptians. He wasn't a part of it. Matter of fact, Binyamin is his only brother. <coughs> His only real brother from both, from his father and from his mother. He's the only brother to Yosef. And, 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 and as strangely it is that uh, finally he breaks down, he becomes like this new person that we don't recognize him. And, ha and it happens so quick. Take, for example, a few, a few of the... And finally Yosef breaks down. First of all, Yehuda, who is, you know, con confronting, confronting Yosef in his whole story, turns to and he tells him, no, we can't bring him down and our father's going to die and so on. First time we see, Yosef is crying. On chapter 45, verse, everybody go away. No one remained while he with Yosef when he made himself known to his brothers. And before he's able to say anything, he started crying. He started crying. I am Yosef. My father is still alive. This is the most dramatic moment in the old story of Yosef and his brother. When he says these two words, Ani Yosef, I am Yosef. They can look him in the eye. It was not you who had sent me here. But God sent me here. Maharu, hurry, says in verse 9. Quick, quick, quick! We are love and go up to my father. But Martin Melov will say to him, "Koyoma bin Chay Yosef." Yosef said, "Samani likim leodem lechol Mitzrayim." God has made me a master of the old Egypt. Redoi, like, come down to me. Al tamoi, do not delay. Quick, quick, quick! Suddenly he's rushing. Hello, you had a chance. You had a chance to see your father. And to reunite with your father if you were to really want. Instead of saying, celebrating with his brothers and slowly let his father, you know, or maybe he should go down to, 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 to Knaan. That's a separate discussion. No. I want it now. Maru, Maru, hurry. And tell him not to delay. Goshen is prepared. I have a place for him. He already has an apartment for his father. He has a whole neighborhood for the family. Everything is prepared. This is only two years into the famine. <coughs> and then comes to verse 14. Look what happens at verse 14. 
comes to verse 14. Now, the real crying starts. Can you turn your away? What? Can you turn he wanted to cry, he went to the room. Right. Mm -hmm. Go back a second to last week's parsha on page 244. Seeing his brother at the first time. On verse 29. He lifted up his eyes and he saw his brother Binyamin, his mother's son. And Yosef says, Is this your little brother of whom you spoke to me? And he says, God be gracious to you, my son. Uh, unbelievable dialogue. It's actually in the Talmud, which took place between Yosef and Binyamin before Yosef decided, I can't control myself anymore, I have to go cry. You know what Rashi tells us? There was a dialogue. There was a dialogue. Yosef actually was asking Binyamin, do you have a brother? from the same mother. And Binyamin said, I had a brother, but I don't know where he is. So Binyamin answers him. Binyamin tells his brother, all those names are associated with my brother who I lost <coughs> and the many difficulties that my brother had went through. He told them if the first child is called Bella. Bella means in Hebrew swallowed. Because my brother is somewhere swallowed among the nations. The second child is Becher. Because my brother was a firstborn a Bechor to my mother. And the third name is Ash Be'el. Which means he was captured by God never had a chupa, and he was never at my chupa. Yosef feels all that, and obviously he can't control himself. He feels that this is, this is going to break him completely, and he goes out in the room to cry. And after he goes out to the room and he cries, he still plays the shtick. You know, locks him up, I'm keeping him here. I still don't trust you. What are you doing? This is your brother. You already heard so much information that, that, that affected you personally, emotionally, and you would know what it meant, what it means for your father to be the situation he is, and for Binyamin to be what he is. What are you playing sticky? Goes on. No high ground. No high ground. Keeps on, you know, pulling it more and more. The very fact that he has to get Binyamin done down to um, down to Egypt. So you make me sugar to go down in Egypt. Tell the brothers, you have a brother? Oh, I'm the brother. Yosef, go bring my father and my brother Binyamin down, and we are going to party from now on from forever. Sie macht nicht sense. Which may be true. It's not, it's not, it's not. Exactly, it's not sensitivity. It's, it's an act of cruelty, maybe. Mm. And Yosef was not last 17 when he was there with, with, in the tribe, not even at home. Because of the way Yosef organized his life for him, that there should be uh, I'm going to ask you one more question. I don't like to bombard questions. I would like to get to the, to the explanation too. What is the first words? This is a question which we ask every year, but it's good to ask it and to try to learn every year something new. What is the first words that Yaakov tells Yosef who wants the meet and reunite? No, in Chumash, what is the first word he tells him? Israel is father in Goshen. That's, that's the meeting place. Yeah. No. Vayero Elo. 
Page 261, verse 29. No. 29. Oh, 29. 21, you said. 29, sorry. 29. Again, drama. He's going to meet his father after 22 years. Vayero Elo. He appeared before him. Vayipo Elo Al-Tsoborov. Fell on his neck. What is that? A natural response. You see your son after 22 years, your father after 20 years, you fall on each other's neck. Oh, I can die. Hello. <laughs> That's what Yaisa wants to hear from you. Goodbye, Nishleil. 22 years you're waiting to see him. Say! Okay, if you don't want to say now, I can leave. Say, was machst du, The last thing you want to tell your loved one after being separated for 22 years, oh, you're here, now I can die. <laughs> that's what you That's what you were waiting to see me? <laughs> so you can die, Baruch Hashem? <laughs> if I would know that that's what it would be, Our boy side, we gotta we gotta make sense a little bit in this parsha. We gotta put some insight into the parsha. We gotta see what's going on over here. Until his soul saved, when Yosef saw Yaakov and he said, "Now I can die," he was saying basically, "Now I can die like a man." Which meant to say, now not that I'm going to die now. Here now, every day was another deadly experience to me. I woke up in the morning, crying for myself. Now, I'm going to lost God's presence after Yosef disappeared. Why did God leave him? Because God could not be in a home with his I'm going anguish and sadness and bitterness. And, uh, he's also looking for comfortable places. He's an infinite God, but he doesn't like to be with Pakrachta people. You know? He's going, he's going. If he has if he is looking for to spend his day, he's gonna go in a home with his happiness and joy and music. So Yaakov actually lost God for a number of years. And he was concerned, you know what? That's it. I don't have this world and I'm not going to have the world to come either. So till now he was concerned. I don't have this world and I don't have the world to come either. I lost my son and I'm the cause for his loss. Now that he saw that Yosef is alive, he says, okay. For Hashem, the world to come, he's going to have. And, uh, but I'm going to die, it's going to be one death. They're saying goodbye to this world, but at least we're going to meet up in the world to come. Not that it's, but I believe it's, it's all connected. And there's all kinds of insight. They say, I'm not sure how valid it is, they say a story about the famous uh, commentator Ibn Ezra. It was, you know, a lot of big bacteria, and he, uh, he almost couldn't see. And, uh, and he heard there's a good doctor in Egypt. His name is Maimonides. That's what the story goes. It's a, it's a popular story. I'm not sure how valid the story The story is that he traveled all the way to Egypt. To meet the Rambam, he heard, also he didn't have any money. Ebenezer was a very, very poor man. As he, everybody put his hand, the Razil Shlemazel and came to business. Famous expression that he said that if I would deal with uh, shreds, no one would die. <laughs> and if I would deal with candles, the sun would never stop. Kibbe the Rambam, and now he's like being shoved into a stable with goats. And never, he was lying there, a broken hearted man, and he cried and he cried and he cried. And slowly, the bacteria started coming out and leaving his eyes and he was able to see 
And when he came out, mm -hmm. the Rambam told him, when I saw you, I died, my diagnosis, the Rambam was a physician and doctor, I saw that you need some salty tears to flow through your eyes and that will release the bacteria. <laughs> He was a nasty, and nasty I, doctor. And I knew that what's going to make you cry? I mean, the shock of coming all the way, what they did. But still, what do you want for Binyamin? It doesn't explain anything about Binyamin. There are other commentaries, even Nachmanides. Nachmanides discusses it, this very same question that he asked. Originally, Nachmanides says, that Yosef, the famous commentary of Nachmanides, Nachmanides says that actually Yosef, wanted to make sure that the dream, remember the dream that there was, mm -hmm. they were bowing down, 12 of them bowing down to him, 11 were bowing down. That dream had to be materialized. In order to do it, he felt that that's a part of it, to get his brothers in a way that they will all bow down to him. And in the dream, it was also the, he had a nice dream, let's say it was even a prophecy. Let God take care of it. It's not your business to figure out, you know, to help God in figuring out those dreams. To get father done, father done. Epis the old Maisa doesn't... Uh, a thought which, which can give us some insight into the story of Yosef and his brothers. Obviously, when we look at the tribes, the way we have to view them is to realize that they are, and that's how the story would have continued. And then somehow, Yosef forces them to come down to Egypt because here is where the food is, and he gets them to acknowledge that they were wrong, to us today, knowing that this is the story of our fathers. In other words, Yosef truly does not want the story to end up that they did not just acknowledge that they were wrong, but they actually improved their behavior to a way, to a point that we can see sincerely that whatever wrong they did before in an untruthful way. Putting a brother in a pit and at the same time telling the father, you know, he's all, an animal was the one who, you know, who attacked him. You're not truthful. Actually, Shimon Levi did it to our city of Shechem, telling them to circumcise and then killing them. It has to be a moment where the brothers are really ready to, first of all, knock on their heart and say, we are guilty, like they say in the parsha. Aval Hashem threw him into a pit. They were ready to sell him away. What happens in this story with Shimon first, and then Binyamin, and then meeting with Yosef, there's one thing which keeps on repeating itself again and that they are all standing together and saying, we cannot let our brother, one of our brothers, to go through what we did to our first brother, Yosef. We can't let Shimon in jail. We can't let Binyamin. They could have said, you know what? You want to keep Binyamin? <laughs> Fine. So, uh, into it. And the father kept on teaching him about this and evolution and, the, the, and, and this theory and that theory. And the mother kept on saying, Beresh is Kim, Hashem created this world. And there was Adam and Chava and Avram and Sarah. He asked his mother, tell me, who is really, a, where are we coming from? And the mother says, we are coming from Adam and Eve. They were the first, and then came their children, and then Avram and Sarah, and then Yitzchak and Rivka, and Yaakov and Rachel, and Leif. 
But he said, I spoke to the dad, and dad told us that the first one actually was monkey. <laughs> but a monkey! I'm becoming from the monkey. And the mother said, no, he's just talking about Isa. Oh. They did it well till now. And then Yosef sees them, and he brings out in them their best moments that they say, no, we are responsible. This is our brother. We are not going home. All the words that Yehuda is saying in the beginning of the Parsha, we are responsible, we're not going anywhere. This is our brother, we have to keep him. This is the way the story develops. Yosef is allowing his brothers to regain the power of responsibility towards each other. And only then is when they can become that they are descendants, which is all of us, realize what life is all about. I can understand his attitude towards his brothers, but it still doesn't excuse the treatment of his father in those other 22 years. That, that's not an explanation. It's an answer, but not an explanation. Oh, the opposite. It's an explanation, but not an answer. That's the price. Sometimes you pay for such a tragic event which happened to him in order to somehow repair it. A very expensive price. But now when you look back to Yosef's brother, to uh, his face, whether it's in uh, Kim Jong Jong or one of those. <laughs> 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 ah? Pelosi. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Whatever they want, no one can. No one can control them. No one can control them. He has the last word. He doesn't have to make a a, a government decision. He could have taken all this nine have. Huh? You're not bringing me your brother. You're not bringing me your father. <laughs> and that's it. It would be over. And they're ready for it. They're ready. But they would not give up this. And when Yaakov sees that the, his sons who are standing by the test, and they are who they express themselves to be, responsible to each other, Arevim, like the famous saying, Israel Arevim every one of them is responsible for one another. Yaakov says, You're doing a great job. Yosef, you did a great job. You brought out the best of my sons. <coughs> Father, I'm concerned. <coughs> like, like, well, I can die now means you can, you can run the business. Imagine sometimes there's a, someone, a father built a business and Baruch Hashem is going well, but he's not sure how they're going to continue. Yosef, the Rebbe once said that when Yaakov came down to Egypt, he didn't know what happened to Yosef. 22 years, Yosef could have been uh, one of the town, looked like a shayet. Probably doesn't wear a yarmulke. He doesn't keep Yiddishkeit. He forgot. He, he forgot everything was, what he was trained with. Especially probably he's upset what his father did to him. So actually, Yaakov was prepared to come now to Egypt and having to put in now extra effort and work for the spiritual sake of his family. Because who is going to watch them? He can't trust Yosef. He has to now be there for them. Physical, I'm dying. I can go means they are all in good hands. My kids, my grandchildren, you are here. You are the man, Baruch Hashem. Thank God for Yosef. Om Sofa. That's the, that's the insight of that expression of Yosef. What this Pasha teaches us, my dear friend, is the very fact and the essence of the story, and this is to be responsible for each other. To get up, to stand up for each other. The old Parshiva Yigash that we are learning 
is in the old story of Yosef, like he explained it now, is simply to bring a 